strength in you, he will celebrate it. So you will not even see your weakness, but he's trying to walk on your weakness. Hello? I am a proof. Jam your hands together for this man. We need five persons, just five. Two, two minutes each. We, mommy, we are praying. Anyway, we, are, we increase it by one minute because of Pastor Dr. Mary. One, three, three minutes. Can I see the five? Just raise your hands. Yes, mommy. Yes, yes. And it will mean two more. Two. I've got it. Yes, four. One. Minister Bosse. Minister Bosse. You can come. After Minister Bosse, we'll get Mrs. Oji, um, Imao Tulu, and Apostle Koji, and Pastor May will be the last. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. How many people like what you are seeing about me now? Do I look beautiful? Do I look take away? <laughs> I remember when I came here. I will look at the mirror and I'm very okay. But when I come and appear, I'll put on my best. Apostle will say, what are you wearing? If I ever see you wear this thing again. And also have some of my colleagues. I like carrying big bag. They said, this is your bag. If I see you carrying this bag again. Minister Emmanuel La and Pastor Brown. They were not especially Pastor Brown. Ah, they really showed me, but I stood my ground. But I want to thank God that today I'm a changed person. All glory to Papa Apostle Utulu. He said, I want to groom you when your husband comes. What I wish the husband is not here now, so I'm the husband and the father you are seeing. And he's doing, he has done a perfect work concerning that. <laughs> Secondly, when I came to this ministry, I don't know what to save. Money don't stay in my hand. I will spend one before another one come. But when I came here, he said something. I wasn't even a full member then. He said, all your customers, send them a message of appreciation. Thank them for being part of your business and your progress. I did that. And that week, I sold goods that I made a profit of 100,000. It has never happened before. And ever since then, I have been saving. Now I have savings. Now I have something to fall on by the grace of God. All because of the grace. I remember when we were praying this morning, Something just came to my mind and we said, Onaga, Onaga, is it working? Is it working? So it's working. The grace in this ministry is working. So I want to celebrate our Father in the Lord who had the call and he obeyed and God has used him to touch many lives. Nobody came here by accident. And I want to bless the name of the Lord for that in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. I am Dickness Oji. Everybody knows me. I don't know where to start, but I want to start one place. I remember years back when I met Apostle, I was nobody. Nobody knows me. But I remember one thing. I remember that I was living in a Gothic man's house who has a shrine under our roof. Praise the Lord. It was not easy. But the grace in this house, I remember while we were at Abla Dodadi, there was a program we normally do. 24 hours in the presence of God. I bet you. When daddy introduced that program, one day, I was in Abolado praying. I just eased myself towards evening. Let me go to my house and check my children. Behold, I was there shouting fire, fire, fire. When I got to my house, the altar of the devilish man has gone down. Praise the Lord. That was when 
my beginning started. Praise the Lord. I came. Mommy chose me. Anywhere I can enter. There is no place I cannot enter. I was looking myself. At times I will go to where daddy always did. Stay, whether on that rock, I will just they romance myself there. People would not know what I was doing. Praise the Lord. But I remember when I got to Ablado, Daddy assigned me to be cleaning the house. And I was cleaning the house. I was cleaning toilets. When I left, I would be talking to God. I say, I am as dirty as these toilets. You will clean me. And God cleaned me. Praise the Lord. Daddy has so much added in my family. I remember when my daughter got admission, she was leaving my house without nothing. My, husband, my, wife, my daughter will receive something, a less from apostle. Praise the Lord. He said, my daughter, what are you doing? First he said, my daughter, what are you doing? He said, say, go and roll yourself. Go upstairs. Ask them. That was how Ezine became computer literate. Praise the Lord. That has added so much in my life, in my family. He has done what I don't know how to start scouting. I told somebody, most back, I say, look at me. Am I not looking good? Can you see me and you will not expect me to give to you? He said, yes, now I have car, but my apostle always give me money. You say what? I say, I cannot follow my apostle in the car. Mommy will sit down. She will. Daddy will just choke hand. Pass it. Praise the Lord. When people are calling me, ah, auntie, mommy, I no get to. For me, looking at me, looking for me to give them. Apostle is still giving me money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will sit in his parlor. He will say, Daughter, this is weekend. Take. When you know, at times I imagine how about people that don't have, if he's so much giving me money like this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank the life of Apostle in my children, in my house. And I will call somebody, I call my son this morning. I said, Today is daddy's birthday. I don't know why you people, you will not say this man has not added. To us. I want to thank Apostle for where we are today. We are today in the village. They are looking at us as if we are one kind of big, big people. But you come here, Apostle will be giving you money, asking you that award you will. May his name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, let's speak to our three minutes. Time is very, very important. Praise the Lord. I hardly talk about a man of God because I don't know where to start. But today, I felt that some people should know him well because we grew up together. He taught me morals. I want to talk about forgiveness. Before you offend him, he has forgiven you already. Because uh, I'm somebody that can offend you on and on until Mary knows. But then, when we do that, he say, oh, I don't, this boy, I don't know what to do to you. And they don't know what to do. Actually, you uh, cannot uh, say, go away. I don't want you again. God has made it so. But today, I want to talk about God's grace upon his life. He has what he hates is that if he tell you to do this and you will go this way and do the other one, you have uh, become uh, the enemy. I told you this the right way and you refuse. But if you follow him, you will see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I want to thank God for his, for his life. I want to talk about his wife also. He has been a mother. He has been a friend. He has been all, almost everything you can talk about a woman. She has the quality. So I thank God who has made it uh, that he, he, the God grace upon his life. I pray that he will flow in the ministry in Jesus' name. Praise Master Jesus. I'm so happy to be in your midst. He's my brother. I came here to do, I didn't know him. 
I came here to do PGD and Bible College, Alec. And I went upstairs one day and I met him and I, I began to tell him my problems. We cannot exhaust it. And at a point he stopped me, he said, concentrate in what you have come to do. Concentrate in what you have come to do. And ask God for others. The Lord will do it. If land is as big as this my palm in my village, I don't have. But I'm from the royal family. So I told him all those things. But when I started the PGD, I will begin to, you know, I begin to with him. Last year, I got four plots. How did it happen? I don't know. How did it happen? I don't know. I keep quiet. I went to America as far back as 1980 to do engineering and I think that I will come back with my at least with masters. But 1986 I came back with nothing. I came back with eh, nothing. So we continued. Life become thing or the other. 1987, I went to America, I went to Europe. Another business of what of six point seven million dollars. Procaine injection, antibiotics, and geriatric pharmato. And we cleared at the airport and went to breadfruit and put it in a district. The boy that was doing it was selling it, sending his brother for hard drug, not knowing that his brother has been caught at Swiss. So he was selling the money and using the money. I could not get out of six point something million dollars. I could not get up to 500 naira. And then the bank was on my neck. But to God be the glory. Today, I am a free man. Amen. Due to the fact that I followed the instruction of this set man of God. If you listen to him, you will not fail it. Let me stop so far. God bless you. Lord. Hallelujah. Grace has found one of our brother, Minister Shadrach, just three minutes. After then, Pastor May will come up. Praise the Lord, church. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord, church. Happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I, I think I have to do this. I've waited so long, but I have three minutes. So I would compress it into the birthday message I sent to you. I don't know if you've seen it, but it says so much. First of all, the Bible says in Philippians 4, from verse 8, that whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are righteous, whatsoever things, but the comprise of these things, if there be any praise, when you see things that are praiseworthy of, think on these things. And by the grace of God, I, I pray and I believe that the aura of the fellowship today and the worship that we are giving God on behalf of this great man who would all go home to reflect and think about it so that he would have the ability to measure up on the grace that God has given him. 2016, I came from Abuja uh, down to Lagos. I, came, I, I spent 19 years as a deeper lifer. Um, the first Pentecostal church I attended was Dunamis. And I wasn't blending because I don't like praying in tongues. So when I came to the church, uh, when I came to my auntie's place, thank you very much, ma. Thank you, ma. I love you. When I came to her place, she, she started fighting. If I had known, I would have not come. She said I must come to their church. I said, I don't want. The first day I came here, I will never forget. It was Ungozi Utulu that sang that morning. And I will not forget that song she sang before the throne. And when she climbed the altar and she was singing, everybody started praying in tongues. I was almost the odd one. I pray, but it's only when the Holy Spirit carries me in an intent. So I said, I didn't. then this is my usual seat. And I, I kept hiding, hiding, hiding. And I was struggling to do the things that I do. 
but believe me. I found a man that so loved me at the time. I, I, I always tell my brother Samuel, I said, you, you would not understand. And the reason is because I could remember when I was teaching in the school. When, while, I was, while I'm in school, I'll be leaving the school down. Sometimes I'll leave my last lesson. When he calls, I'll be coming down. The reason is, out of the whole staff, out of the whole young boys, I'll be the only one he will remain fruitful. And when I come, thank you so much for loving me, sir. I, I, don't, I cannot end this birthday um, 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 speech without saying this. Apostle Tulu is a man of God's presence. He's a man that loves people. He's a kind-hearted man. He's a man that God has called and ordained to do his business upon the face of the earth. He's a man that has been anointed of God, filled of his grace. I, I believe I've followed him in the little while to the same way he is in the inside, that's the same way he is in the outside. And I believe and I know, even as I end this speech today with this, I know that God who has added this year would add more greater here to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much, sir. I read. Super Daddy. I expect your smile now. Super Daddy. <laughs> okay. Don't worry, you smile. There's a lot to say about you here. By your consistent, by your consistent burning, a generation has been set aflame. A great example is being set in righteousness for generations and generations to come. We follow you doggedly and we are committed to following you because we see that you follow Christ. This has been consistent for over four decades according to the caption of story that you told us about. We honor you because of your productive oversight over life, the body of Christ, humanity, institutions God have granted you and the entire body of Christ because you are the father given to us by the Lord himself. Your uncommon wisdom is a very scarce commodity. In, in fact, it's a resource that has not been refined. Even the greatest alphabet, according to the leakage of diesel, cannot be compared to the world that you are to humanity. The operational paradigm by, by which effective kingdom services is done across various contexts is heavily reinforced upon you. And you see the result by the way you've radically changed the Alec Institution, the Dominion Gate Ministry, the PFN in Ojo, the PFN in Amu Odofin, and your family with an excellence that gleams like the light forever. I and everyone here worldwide has been massively blessed by the gift of you, by your great kingdom character, example, faith, love, patience, and integrity, the possibility of standing firm for the Lord in a shaky world, are bound to us in a manner that makes God's way the only way for us to choose. Your golden heart is filled with the fear of the Lord. This is an incontractable fact. That's, that's why by your hands, blazed upon us, we've seen that everything that you've done have excelled countlessly. It's in the songs of many, far, near, and within. It has been seven years since I, I met you. And those seven years are, has been the most the most perfect years of my life. I thank God because this seven years is a year of perfection. And I believe your presence in my life will perfect everything that the Lord has started with you in my life. I love you, Daddy. I love you, sir. I love you, sir. Amen. Happy birthday, Apostle. If you're, if you're celebrating my daddy, can you stand up and celebrate him in love, in honor? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. God bless us all in Jesus' name. You know when Pastor Abraham said we should come and give testimony about Apostle, and he said two minutes. I said that's not a testimony. He just wants us to come and wish him happy birthday. But some of us have this great testimony about this. <laughs> I don't know what to call him. Because there was a time myself and young girls were calling him spirit. So calling him man, after calling him spirit, is something bringing him down. But let me say this about Apostle Patrick. If a chukude, what God has written, Utulu. 
1988, while I was in the world enjoying my life as a flight stewardess touring the whole world, going everywhere. One day, my kid sister, who was in a nursing school in Agbo, Florence, came back from school. And first Sunday, we didn't go to church. I don't go to church because where I was living then, they had this church there. And every day they beat people with broom and they are conducting deliverance. So the church was not me. My sister came and said, ah, how can we, she's uh, charismatic. How can we stay in the house? We are not going to church. I said, I beg, I beg. Make on a good church. But one very beautiful day, something happened to me and I woke up in the morning all my younger ones sitting with, staying with me were with me and I said to them, I think we need to go to church. And where, which church will we go to? We can definitely not go to that place where they are using broom on people. My landlord, then, Mr. Katapo, I see them every Sunday, they wake up. Why I was not following them? Because they were wearing white garments. So I went to him that Saturday. I said, Daddy, we'll go follow and I'll go to church tomorrow. The man did like this. You, I don't invite you, Taya. The, mother, the wife said, may, may go. So I left. The longer short story is this. First Sunday, they refused to pick me. The next Sunday, I said, maybe because they thought I would not wear white. I went and tied white wrapper, white booba, everything white, and I sat outside waiting for them. So when they came down to drive to church, here was Mary waiting. I said, I tell them, I said, will they go to church now? So I entered. My younger ones, they went Catholic, because Uyo was charismatic Catholic. So they went, and I went with them to church. And when I got to church, I was looking, very inquisitive, and I read in between lines. So I went and sat second row of seats. They were telling me it's for elders. I said, in the church again, when I get seats for people. Ah. Anyway, they allowed me to sit. And sitting down with white, with my nails as close, with my makeup as wild as nothing, my nails were carrying magenta, <laughs> magenta nail polish. My lipstick was magenta. So it had to match because I was an air hostess. And they were looking at me and I couldn't be bothered. Nobody talked to me. But that day, after the administration and everything, I was like, oh, I was the devil inside the house. God came down that day for me. An announcement was made. Tomorrow, Bible study. Tuesday, youth meeting. Wednesday, Thursday, youth meeting. I said, okay, this week. And God did it. I had no job. Monday I went. Tuesday I went for the youth meeting. I was looking at them. Because I was a youth. A very young in 88. I was looking at them. Apostle, if you remember, there was, and you will remember, there was a crisis in the youth fellowship then. So they needed to choose a, lead, a new set of leaders. And the church authority decided they would give us a father. Papa Otudo. And... Here is Papa Otudo picking this young man as his secretary. I watched them. Wednesday, Thursday, I came back. I watched them. And then there was an announcement. They are doing three days stay in the house. Ah. <laughs> Which one is three days stay in the house? I went and asked again. I'm telling you the encounter I had with Jesus. If not through some things, it wouldn't have been. That is how I was arrested by God. And I joined them. And if they can do it, I can do it also. That was my motive. If they can do it, anything they are doing, I will do. And I joined them. I have not regretted that. Then I remember one day, how did I leave all these things? I was on leave. Apostle, we came back from uh, the retreat, the 13 days retreat. And then we were in Orile. We had they already see this man. He's always creating... What do I call it? Well, first, if I say change, is something... Uh, well, uh, the man knows how to create. When he enters there, the thing will turn. And come. The totality of the destiny of that ministry changed. We stopped wearing white. <laughs> we became righteous people. 
We became everything. The elders, the leaders were now following him. The totality of the church were now following him. And then this day we came back and I went to tell him, I'm going to London as usual. Once I come back from retreat, I jet out to London to go and rest. It's my vacation. And then he looked at me and he was looking at my head straight. And he said to me, Auntie, what is this on your head? I said, I'm supposed to leave me. I don't like you talking about anything about me. Leave me, leave me, leave, leave my head. I ran away and I went to London. One week later in England, I had to get my host, Kikemi, her so rest in peace, to remove the attachment on my head because I was almost dying. I was dying. I told him when I came, I said, I don't know the kind of prayer where you pray. But that was physical death to rise to the spiritual. Most people don't know this. That was the night I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning. And then suddenly there was like water pouring on my head. And everything just went up. Boom, headache. Everything just disappeared. That is the encounter that took away all that from me. It didn't come. I'm sure all these things I'm saying might be sounding strange, but I took my time. In the recent time, I've been doing a serious, you know, appraisal of who is Maria Woni, and this is one of the appraisers. That was the end of makeup. That was the end of, I did not stop makeup because it's church doctrine. It was an encounter. And it, was, it wouldn't have been possible because I know, listen, I tell people, somebody somewhere prayed for your salvation. You may not know the person, but somebody somewhere interceded for you. I know God used him. Am I going to say the words God used him to do in my family? Every one of you know UT. I like to give it as a testimony. When UT was born, the totality of her intestine was visible. It took this man and his brothers that are still very close to him today. Rasheson. Most of you know, what is this pastor? George Ojene. He's a teacher and he's, they started together. These are the people that created revival. They are revivalists. And so they are part today. It's not a problem. God spread them out as he did with the early apostles. They were revivalists. They were revivalists. Anywhere they entered, they turned it upside down. There were four of them. Himself, Cheson, George, and Tony Osedo. They stood by me and my sister. And today, everybody is seen with be a testimony. That's the girl that we born without anything. For their prayers, for their intercessions, for their cry to God. We wouldn't have had it be in my family today. Apostle, I can't say much. When my job stopped, when Nigeria Airways went, poof, went to work in the Monday morning, they used tear gas to pursue us. I asked myself, what would I do? I said, the best thing to do is to just continue from where I left. And I entered Dominion Gate. Nobody invited me. Nobody, because when, we, or when God spread us out, Sent us to so many places. I was sent to where to where I would go and increase in warfare. <laughs> I, I, that was my own uh, assignment. Praise God. If you see him today, you think you have seen success. If you don't know the story, my man goes with wash shirt in the night, put it on that fan to dry. That's why I'm sure I used to washing apostles' clothes. Because she's the only one that knows how to put that starch. Very mild starch. And in the morning, they will use iron to iron it. That's if, like you, you were there. You are laughing. You were you not joining them to do the washing. <laughs> she's a living testimony of it because she was staying with her post to them. We will be going back like this. We will see. You know, the, you know what they are selling? You don't know. You are not bad. They are selling shirts. Uh, you people call it Bengdan Pit. No, in our days, they used to hang it. Praise God. We'll buy it and we'll wear it. Today, you see them, you think they are, you have seen success. Apostle, I cannot, I will continue to say it to the whole world to hear. 
that I have not, and I'm still saying it. That's why anything that happens, people wonder, why is she like this? Why is she following you? Why? Mm -mm. I, there's something I saw. I saw the spirit of Jesus. I saw humility personified. I saw grace personified. I saw somebody who is nothing but eternity conscious. Anything you are doing, sometimes I'll go to his office and say, Apostle, I don't like this. This is what you say. It is your assignment. Go and manage it. He doesn't see anything that is difficult. I want to say happy birthday to you. Today, very unlike me, I woke up to several, I'll be after several, I jump and say, oh my God, not today. Happy birthday, Apostle. Happy birthday. I pray for you, joining my faith to the voices of the people that are praying. They may not be here physically, but I know voices are going up to heaven. And I say, this voice in this season of life becomes global. In the name of Jesus Christ, this voice, this completed assignment of God in heaven, deposited on planet Earth to represent God, begins to represent God in the whole world. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace to stand. You always tell us, let him that think I stand, take it. It is grace, apostle. Grace to stand and to continue to stand. And at the end of this journey, whenever it pleases the Lord, 120, 100, 150, 160, anytime it pleases the Lord to call you home, the host of heaven will be waiting for you. Host of heaven will stand on the official, and there will be an official to receive you home. In the name of Jesus Christ, those that God has given you, you will not lose any one of them. You are not permitted to cast anyone. You will not cast your young. You will not cast your children. You will not mourn your wife. Whether the devil likes it or not. You are a global voice. She's a global voice. I have told her she will have to be the voice that God has made her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you still in the house? Are you still in love with me? Please join me to just thank God for Apostle Patrick. Monyo Loru tole mi Patrick o oh, oh shuba re mare o oh, eh, baba wa o oh, shuba re mare o oh. Monyo Loru tole mi Apostle Patrick o oh, oh, shuba re mare o oh, eh, 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 oh shuba re one more time, join me to tell him All our roots of me are past to Patrick Oh, Shubare, Mare, oh Baba, wa Oh, Shubare, Mare, oh I wish you all days like this In your own season in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. For I have the honor and privilege given to me by God and I have Pastor Brian Savage to bring to the podium this morning our own, one of our wonderful, look at our wonderful father standing behind the apostles, sitting behind him. He will never fall because there are spillers all over him. Let's welcome with total humility to the almighty God to this podium to minister to the life of our father Apostle Andrew Ihala join me as you rise to your feet clap to Jesus all glory to Jesus Somebody shout hallelujah. Is that all the hallelujah we can shout? Somebody make a joyful noise in the house. What an awesome God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. Who has brought us to another new beginning. Who has done something new in our midst. Hallelujah. 
And what is that new thing God has done in our midst? God has added another year to the year of our extinct father, leader of leader, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's give Jesus the bigger clap offering. Listen to all the testimonies. If we to allow everybody to testify, we won't live here. I know everybody has one thing or the other. That through this servant of God, our daddy, that God has been impacting our life, affecting our life. And we have come this morning to join in to say, God, we thank you. You know, whatever you thank God for, God multiply more. One of the best things to do at church a day like this is to join our daddy to say, God, we thank you. That by grace in the name of Christ. And there is something I want us to before we go into the word of God, it is my usual way of appreciating God. Daddy is 62. Is that not so? According to God's servant, 62 is not 62 days, neither 62 weeks. We are talking of 62 years. Full of experience, full of grace, full of life. And we are going to open our mouth to shout 62 hallelujah. Do you like that? Whether you like it or not, they gave me 30 minutes. Oh, shout 62, hallelujah. Do you know that hallelujah is God's name? And when you shout hallelujah, you are praising God. So join me, be counting it, be what? Make sure your own complete. Phone will know that we are here to celebrate. Are we ready now? One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. your doing and it is wonderful in our sight blessed be your name in Jesus name we pray praise you the Lord once more again daddy I want to say thank you for this privilege to stand in your podium to share the word of God in church a wonderful day like this the Lord bless you and mommy in Jesus name and all our PFM chairmen that are in the house want to say an executive thank you for being here to honor our daddy's birthday and our leader and all the Dominion Gate ministers, elders, deacon, brethren, and all the partners. God bless all of us in Jesus' name. Quickly, we are looking at a scripture that we all know. Psalm number 90, verse number 12 going to take from there Psalm number 90 verse number 12. The scripture tells us in that Psalm number 90 verse number 12. So, teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. Praise the Lord. 
This morning, I want to quickly speak on what I thought celebrating the birthday of an, an apostle of dominion mandate. A man of dominion mandate. I just believe that we are here to celebrate his birthday. Praise the Lord. Where we read tells us that we should learn to teach to also number our days and also apply our art unto wisdom. Unto what? Wisdom. When we talk of wisdom, we are talking of rightful application of knowledge. When we talk of wisdom, we are talking of God himself. And why is the scripture here telling us to apply our art unto wisdom? Because there is something about wisdom. Praise the Lord. When we look at the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, you find out that wisdom is very, very important to creativity, to innovativity, and everything that we see today that we are also enjoying. And the Bible also tells us that God is the God of wisdom. Jesus is also wisdom. Praise the Lord. And one of the things Solomon asked from God among many was wisdom. And by that, God gave him every other thing that he did not ask for, which he needed to fulfill his mandate. Praise the Lord. We are here to celebrate a man of dominion mandate. I call him the Apostle of Dominion Mandate. Praise the Lord. And I believe it and I'm convinced about it. That is an apostle indeed. A trailblazer, a pathfinder, a pace setter in that area. When we talk of mandate, I've come to get mandate clearer from coming to know him, listening to his teachings and his preaching. Recently, I was telling one of the, when he was um, ministering some three days ago, or four days ago, and the video YouTube was sent to us, asking us to pray against the evil mandate, against our divine mandate. And it was a great eye opener. And I began to see God calling, God purpose, God plan for my life in a different dimension. Praise the Lord. So, when you say of mandate, what are we talking about? We are talking of from his own several teachings I've listened to, talking of God's divine purpose, God calling, what God has called you to achieve, what God wants you to become, and what God wants you to do. And I've also come to find out that everybody that will live long, everybody that God is sustaining, the reason why God keeps you alive is because of your mandate. Take God's divine mandate away from anybody. There is no reason why God will keep that person alive. So if God is adding a new year to somebody here, it's because of what is mandate. God is keeping that person alive to fulfill his God given what mandate. And when that mandate comes to pass, God calls the person home. And so if you look at the entire scripture, Everybody that lived and lived well and fulfilled their days, there are people who consciously carry out their God-given mandate. And I want to believe that we have church a man in the house. And we are privileged to know him. To call him our leader, our father, our mentor, also our husband, our friend, our uncle, our brother, and our leader. Hallelujah. If a man is going to carry out God's divine mandate for his life, what are some of the characteristics? And I see this characteristic in our daddy in this hour. Number one, he must be visionary. He must be what? Visionary. Every man, every woman God has given a divine mandate, they are visionary people. When you look at our father in the Lord, Apostle Dr. Tully, you will see that he's a man of vision. You can't come around him and not be better 
the way you met him. Nobody ever meet him and remain the same. Visionary people are always taking somebody to somewhere. When God called Abraham, it was the, the mandate of God upon Abraham's life only come to pass by vision. God showed him his next level. This is where I am taking you to. And when you talk of Moses, to bring the people out of Egypt, the same thing. If you talk of Joshua, if you talk of anybody in the Bible, Jesus our Lord and our Savior, talk of the man called Paul. He said, I'm not disobedient to the heavenly bandit. That is the heavenly vision. So I see our daddy in law as a visionary man. That's why you don't see anything stagnated around him. You don't see limitation around him. You don't see anything impossible around him. Hallelujah. And I want us to copy it. And this money, I believe that in this is 62 years birthday, as we celebrate with him, will be impacted by the grace upon his life, the visionary grace, in the name of Jesus Christ. God's servant said, for seven years he met daddy. And for these seven years he has met him. We see that he has taken him from where he was to a greater height. Mama said the same thing. And some other people. And even every one of us. Hallelujah. And if you see the work going on in Dominion Gate, you can see that a man of vision is behind it. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to succeed, you want to live to fulfill your God-given mandate, be visionary. Number two, is a man of focus. Every man living to bring their God-given mandate to pass, they must be focused. Somebody say focus. I've been around God's servant from 2014 by the grace of God through P PFM till date. And I see that it's a man that is focused. Very, very word focused. If you look at all the activities, all the program going on here, the event over his life, both local, international, the training, outfit, the educational outfit, and everything, you see focus. It's never a man that is easily distracted. The reason why many people can't fulfill their God-given mandate because they allow too many distractions. Pursuing too many things at the same time and not achieving any. But it's absolutely different. Somebody say focus. No wonder the Bible tells us look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When you are a man of focus, there is no reason why your mandate will not come to pass. Your God-given mandate. Somebody, I want to believe God that this money, the grace of focus upon his life, God will impact it upon our life. Yeah. So that both our business, our ministry, our career, our relationship, our family, our, and every area, God will give us that divine focus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I also find out that, I've come to see from our daddy that he's a man with daring faith. Daring what? Daring faith. I've seen that in him. Whatever he trusts God for, come to pass. Do I have a witness in the house? Whatever he believe God for, if he says God will do this, you better believe him. If he says God has asked him to do this, you better believe him. For the few years I've been around him, I just keep seeing anything he says, anything he believes God for, he find out from the scripture and all the rest, he declare it and all the rest, I see it come to pass. Dear nothing intimidates him. Nothing stops him from achieving his God-given goal. Want to believe this money that that the same grace will be impacted to every one of us. We have not only come to celebrate with him, we have come to receive impartation. That whatever God is doing in his life, it will happen in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. And also another thing I've come to find out about this apostle of mandate, dominion mandate, is a man that is sacrificial. Very, very sacrificial. You heard our sister said that he will be giving her money. Is that it's not because he's comfortable with him. It's not because he has the central bank. That is the life of sacrifice. The life of what? Sacrifice. Going the extra mile to make things what happen. And I've seen it happen in my life. 
several times and all. And I watched the PFM ministry that God has made him to lead. And I looked at the church. Anytime I come to the church, I copy the, I look at a lot of things and all. And I see that a man that is sacrificial is there. And David said, whatever that will not cost me, I will not use it to serve God. When you look at this man like that, I think last year or two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, when I had a daddy had not got in a house of his own, he was still in a rented and I said, wow, in this kind of big church, you understand that? That is a man of sacrifice. We have seen people driving big cars but no auditorium. We have seen people living in big mansions and claim that God called them and there is nothing to show. Because what? They are not sacrificial. But the sacrificial life has impacted lives and all. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I want to believe God that the same grace will be impacted to us. So that by this time next year, we'll see the same thing happening. That our God-given mandate via sacrificial living will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Another thing I see from this man of our dominion mandate that we are here to celebrate his birthday is a lover of God and people. Lover of God and people. Lover of God and people and all. You see the genuine love of God that he has. It's love for God. It's love for God. Uncompromising love for God. Seeing love for God. Every day, walking with God. You know that this man loved God. And because he loved God, that is why he can give everything to God. The Bible says Solomon loved the Lord and he sacrificed a thousand bond offering. When you see a man who loves God, there is nothing he withhold from God. He says, appreciate God for what God is doing in his life. And you can't be a lover of God and not be a lover of man. And when you love God, you love what God loves. God loves souls. God loves what? That's why we are all here. That's why we are all what? If he doesn't love God, he won't go for soul winning. Look at the mission work to Ghana, to Liberia, to this, to that. I will just be watching him and all the rest. Several times he has asked me to follow him and all the rest. I'm still trusting God. One of the three powers we born. But I see that it is love that is propelling him. It is love that is pushing him and all. And you cannot fulfill your mandate without the love of God and the love of man. And when you love God, it will show in the life of people around you. Praise ye the Lord. Another thing I've come to know, which I will trust God in, in, in the area of the love of God, it will impact that love for us. It will do what? I will not be ready for that impartation. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we easily say, I need the impartation. Listen, I remember several times when Bishop Oyedipo started uh, Shiloh. I think the first year, maybe the second year. And we were with him and he said, he want to impact us with the love of God. That everything that is happening here would have not happened if not the love of God. Until we know his love of God, that is what we can be able to do what he's doing. And we all came out. Oh God, impact us. And impacted us. December, January we were in 21 days fasting and prayer. Just the first week. Preparing for the new year and all. The next thing I knew, we just had fire incident in our compound. And before I know, everywhere engulfed with fire. And the next thing I find out that my entire building got burnt. And all my property, asset, everything and all. And I see the whole church will not be going anywhere again. I remember that message, the love of God. And I told God, God, if it is your purpose that I am following, you have a divine mandate for my life and you have called me to fulfill it. Lord, even though the entire building born, don't allow the fire enter into the church auditorium. And I ran to the church auditorium and the fire stopped exactly. <laughs> and in the evening, when it was service time, nobody, all the people who conduct the service, they were all discouraged and all the rest. I remember the love of God. The love of God that played Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And with mine, the only cloth remaining 
that I came out from the fire with. I went to took my bath, clean myself with the cloth, wear my sandal, and I went to the office, the church, and I was the choir master, I was the prayer warrior, I was everything. People were coming to tell me sorry, and they saw me, and they said, it doesn't look like somebody that something happened to. And somebody said, the love of God. Do you know that from that time to today, everything we lost, we have recovered it more than even hundredfold. So when I see a man driven by God's love, I know what it is. And God's servant, Patrick Dr. Tulu, is one man. One that is pursued with the love of God. Somebody, that grace will come upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Another thing I find out from him is a man of, is a change agent. Somebody say change agent. Every man, every woman that is giving God divine mandate and must fulfill it, they must be change agent. Change word. When God appeared in Genesis chapter 1, you find out that all that God did was changes. Let there be light. The next thing, everything. Changes took place still and other in chapter 6, chapter 7, God rested. Men and women of divine mandate, they are change agents. You can't meet them and remain the same. If you are sick, sickness will change hand to what? To hope. If you are poor, poverty will live to prosperity. If you are down, they will raise you up. If you are homeless, you will have a home. If you are barren, you will be fruitful. If you are single, you will marry. If you are a nobody, you will become somebody. Do we have a witness in the house? Shout hallelujah. So when you look around this ministry and all that God is doing with it, even with PFM, you find out that he's an agent of change. Hallelujah. He's a divine catalyst. Praise the Lord. Another thing you know about the people of Mandate, this apostle of Mandate is a man of integrity. He's a man of what? You can take his word to the bank and they will give you whatever you ask. He's a man of integrity. He's not a double-tongued man. If he tells you this is this, just believe him. Hallelujah. I've seen integrity with him. And it has helped me. It has shaped my life. It has corrected a lot of things around me. You can't follow church a man and not make it in life. Praise the Lord. A man of what? Integrity. You see integrity in his ministration. You see integrity in his relationship. You see integrity in his pastoring. You see integrity in his family life and all. Many a time I just watch himself and mama, watch the children and all the rest, all that they are doing and all the rest, I say, God help us. God what? Help us. Amen. You see integrity in administration in the church and all. You see integrity financially. I don't think that is because he's an accountant or uh, he worked in the bank or whatever. There are many bankers that are thief. Praise the Lord. But this man is a man of integrity. Why? Because of divine marriage. Give Jesus a bigger clap of him. When you see men of integrity, ministers of integrity, the people that are pursuing divine mandate to be fulfilled, they are men of one wife. Husband of what? One wife. Amen. And you just see, you have family people. There was a day something happened in my house. Seriously, and I looked and said, who do I call at church a time? And report this matter. It was him that came to my mind. And I think he was somewhere in Abuja, somewhere, or he knew go for a program. And quickly picked my phone. I said, daddy, this is what is happening. What do I do? And this is what I intend to do. Say, Apostle, relax. Apostle what? Relax. And he quickly canceled me and all the rest. And I just took his counsel. I said, this man can only tell me what is working in his life. And all the rest. Let me just obey. And all my temperament that were trying to go AYR and all the rest, I came to myself. And after everything, I called him. I said, this is one thing that is remaining. I want to take this action. He said, Apostle, give me time. 
myself and my people, we are praying for you and all that for your family. And after so and so hour, if it doesn't happen, call us back and then we'll tell you what to do. Before the hour he said, the whole thing came to pass and all the rest. Amen. And my wife, my children, everybody was surprised. They turned around. How peace came back to the home and everything. And I say, God, I thank you for a man of integrity. Hallelujah. Somebody this morning, let's trust God. As we celebrate with him, let this grace fall upon us. That wherever we go, we'll not just say we know God's servant, apostle Dr. Tulu, that is our father, is our this, is our dad. That people will know that word. People will see integrity in our life. And they will say, like father, like son. Like father, like what? Children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many have I counted? Who is following? Are you sure it's seven? What is number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Number five? Number six? Number seven? Number eight? A man with a thankful heart. A man that is what? Thankful. 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 How many of you know that that is God's Sabbath? Very grateful to God. Very well. For every little thing God does in his life, he will celebrate it. He will acknowledge God. And no wonder God is multiplying his blessing. God is enlarging his scope. When you want to see a man who is mandate driven, they are always thankful. Very, very well. No matter the little result. Don't despise their little result. They are thankful about what God is doing with them, with the church, with the brethren, and all the rest. And you cannot be thankful and do what? Despise God's word. So we have a man that is very, very thankful. And this morning, he has called out to come and join him to thank God. To thank what? To thank God. And when Solomon went to thank God, he thanked God sacrificially. He thanked God with a substance. Is that not so? There are many ways to thank God. You can thank God with your mouth by counting your blessings all by one. You can thank God with singing, clapping, dancing. You can also thank God with your substance. Praise the Lord. And this morning, we are going to join God's servant to thank God. And so thank God, whatever God is doing in his life, the same God will do for us. I mean, of course, when Solomon come to thank God, after the thanksgiving service, God appeared to him. And what did God do? God said, Solo, I have come. Ask anything you want. I believe Solomon would have said, God, why not you send Angel Michael? Why not send one of your heavy sheriff to me? No, God said, I come by myself. I come what? Solo, ask anything. And Solo, look at the What else do I want to ask? Oh, God, give me wisdom. Give me what? Wisdom to fulfill my God-given mandate. Because these people, I cannot rule them without what? You. I know you, you've given me a purpose, a mandate. You have a plan for my life. You left everybody in my father's house that are capable, able, intelligent to pick me. So give me the wisdom to do what? To fulfill what? This mandate. And God said, because of the thanksgiving, because of what? The thanksgiving. God gave him wisdom. Want to believe God? As we join God's servant to thank him for 62 years, another one year that God has added to his life, God will continually release wisdom to fulfill mandate both in his life and in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. How many things do I count? Eight. Is that also? Six plus two is what? Six plus two is what? If that D is 62 years, I hear this is a year of new beginning. Eight is for new beginning. God said I will do a new thing. All things are passed away. It will spring up, you will see it, and it will come to pass. Is that also? Let us trust God that this celebrate with God. God will keep doing new things with him. The mandate of God, God will keep renewing it. God will keep him from glory to glory. Things he has never seen, he desired to see. God will make him to see it. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will use him to do new things in Dominion Gate. 
do new things in the body of Christ, do new things in PFF, and also do new things in our individual life. In the name of Jesus Christ, shall we rise on our feet? Give Jesus a big, big clap of praise. How many of you believe that God has a purpose for your life? How many of you want God to fulfill your God-given purpose? Amen. If God is doing it for him, he will do it for us. We have come to tap into anointing. Tap into what? That dominion mandate anointing. Hallelujah. You can carry that grace and that anointing and remain the same. No wish, no wizard in your family can stand you. No DPR can stand you. No limitation on your way. And there will be no uh, invisible mountain that can stand you. Everlasting mountain will be scattered. God will take us from glory to glory. Stretch forth your hand this morning and begin to thank God. Say, oh God of dominion mandate, oh God. Father, we we'll celebrate other God. Father, a man, other God of dominion mandate, oh God. Father, oh God, we we'll give you praise. Go ahead, Marababa Shataya, Leprokoto Lobo Legedea, Rikrodobo Shada, Nikapa Kataya Balegedea, Riprokoto Lebayagada, Leprokoto Lobo Legede, Rababa Baba, Leprokoto Lobo Shkedea. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Stretch your head, open your eyes. I want us to connect to these eight things. Amen. It is possible. Somebody says it's possible. There is nothing as dangerous as you having sight and not having a vision. Is somebody hearing? You need a vision to succeed in life. Wherever you must get to in life, any height, you need a vision. And you need focus. All that we have counted here is what God is doing and much more with our Father in the Lord. He can do it for us. If only we can tap in. And one of the ways for you to tap into grace is by giving to that grace. By what? To that grace. I know many of us have to make this program a success. But you can still go ahead and give by wisdom. Give by understanding. Give to make the word of God come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Today is marking 62 years. Amen. Six plus two make eight. We want to make three levels of giving. You can belong to any. What do you want to give a seed of eight? A seed of what? A seed of eight. Listen, there was a woman in my church in our ministry. Her sister is in abroad. And you know, those, those of them who did medical, whatever, nursing and all. And in the process, you know, the exam in nursing is a medical exam in America is very expensive and very, very tough and all. And she want to write that as she wrote that exam and order. She was afraid of passing. They said they need, I think, 40 something percent. That is the cut of my, that to tell you how tough it is and all. And the sister called my attention and it was August like this. Just like your convention week. My convention is also August by the grace of God. After your own, my own will come. Praise the Lord. You can follow a man of dominion mandate and go after before him. Let him do it and you will copy. I saw a lot of new things here. I will copy in our church and carry it down here. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, I just to God just ministered to me and said, let her relax. Let her go and sow a seed of eight. We are, we are in the eighth moon. A seed of eight. It's a number of new beginnings. He said, any seed of eight, whether it's eight dollars, eight pounds, eight naira, according to our ability, whether it is eighty, eight hundred, eight thousand, and all. And the woman looked at me and said, what will a seed of eight do to what I am saying about? You no, know, the things of the spirit are foolishness. I know. And her sister told her, just do what apostle asked you to do. And she went ahead. And, and I told her, I said, don't bother to send me the seed. You are a Catholic woman, go to the Catholic church, go to the altar and drop it. Leave the rest, God will do it at all. And I said, when I started praying, God told me, as well as you have told her, whether she does it, she didn't, I am going to honor your prayer at all. And I prayed for her. On that one week, a result came. A woman who is afraid of scoring 40, got 75 percent. And she was so happy, she called her, her sister in Nigeria and said, Tell that apostle to send me his account. I want to send the dollars.
to him. I said, no, I didn't pray for you so that I can send dollars to me. I said, take it to them. Say, no, I am sending it. Did you know that I also needed the dollars? I said, God, let it come. Praise the Lord. And it came. He went a long way in our convention that day. It was also an answer to some of the need in our convention. What am I trying to say? God works by a seed. Amen. You can say, oh God, I want to give you a seed of eight. It can be 8,000 naira. It can be $8,000. And whatever that is the denomination you want to give. Are you a seed of eight? And the other second set, I want to give you a seed of six. Another one, I want to give you a seed of one, two, and all. And let's try it this morning. Are you hearing me? If you have it, you bring it out. You don't have it, write a check or give a pledge and order it and return it back. And let's see how that before this time next year, are you whatever the new thing you want God to do that God has not done, it will come to pass in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice and talk to God. Lord, I tie my seed, O that God. Father, O that God, to this eight things, O that God. About O that God. This apostle of dominion mandate, O God. Father, I want to see it in my life. I want to see the manifestation of O that God. Vision, O that God, in my life. I want to be focused, O God. I want to see the result of the arrangement, O God. I want to live sacrificial over the benefit that come through it, O oh God. Lord, help me, O oh God. Lord, help me, O oh God. Marababo shataya. Leketelebo leketebo. Riprokotolobo leketeleya. La prakataya. Le malagada baba. Likrodobo shata. Le prakataya baba leketebo. Rika prokotolobo. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, 62 of us can show God we are giving a seed of it. Is it possible or not possible? Somebody say it's possible. 62 of us can choose to say God we are giving a seed of six. 62 of us can choose to say we are giving a seed of two. Some of us is a very small thing to us. But God does not despise our little beginning. You are only showing it for God to do something new. In a particular area of your life. Amen. You want to be among the 62. That is saying Lord. We want to sow a seed of 8. We want to sow a seed of 6. We want to sow a seed of 2. Just lift up your hand. Why I pray with you. I agree with you. You want to say Lord. I just want to sow a seed of 8. I want to sow a seed of 6. I want to sow a seed of 2. Oh God. Among the 62 people. Just lift up your hand. Just come to me. And let's pray to God. I have come to this altar several times. Sometimes known by God's servant, sometimes some I don't know by God's servant. I've come to sow seed and all the rest, pray in this altar, and I see resort back home. I see resort back home. You are saying, God, I want to. If you have seed, you can carry it and you can come out. If you want to write a note, write a note and all the rest. And we are going to pray. We are going to talk to God. Hallelujah. Marababo Shataya. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Let's come forward. Let's come. Let's come. Let's come and pray. Quickly, I hand over. Quickly. Come, come, come. You want to sow a seed of two? You want to sow a seed of six? You want to sow a seed of eight? And all. Whatever that that seed will do, God will use it to be a blessing to you. Maraba, talk to God. Talk to God. Mention what you want God to do. Mention what you want God to do. Whether you have your seed, you don't have your seed, you can come. You can come. Let's trust God. Let's trust God together. Let's join faith together. You have more than that you want to do. Go ahead. Be very free. I know a lot of us have done one thing or the other. But go ahead. Come. 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 Join me. Join. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Rabba Baba. Lord, in this 62 birthday order, God. Lord, we are keen. Talk to God. Tell God something specific. I want to pray. I want to stand on this exalted altar. I want to stand on the grace of God's servant, our Father in the Lord, to decree, to act that God will do something new. Whether to you, to your son, to your daughter, whether in your business, in your career, whether in the area of your health, whether in the area of your relationship, your marriage, oh that God, go ahead. Marababa Shakra. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, open your eyes. That is sorry for keeping you there. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something. There was a day, our daddy in the Lord, I'm talking of grace. There was a day, our daddy in the Lord, I think we were invited and ordered, we went to Lam or Covenant University. 
for the graduation and other matriculation of his daughter and also God's servant, his son. Amen. I was there. Also, Pastor Johnson, son, also. And I went there. That is the power of association, connectivity. And I saw that from their families, two children are going to Covenant University. Is that not yours too, too? Daddy owned two as of that time and all. And immediately, something speak to me, the Holy Spirit. He said, if I can make it to this man, bringing you into association with them, your own can be possible. Your own can be what? Before this time, I asked from Funke Adejo, you know her name, I know, that she said, if you want to succeed in certain area, covenant children, this is what they do and all the rest. And she told us about Bishop Oyediko University and all the rest. And when you hear that in you want them talking of cost, is that also and all the rest? It's too expensive and all. And but certain things she said and all. Now, when I met these two men of God and followed them to that place, something tell me your own is also possible. Your own is all. And to God be the glory. I hear. Last year, my first daughter graduated. This year, this moon, my second daughter just. Hallelujah. It can only because of association with this grace. This word, this grace. I respect it anytime. I respect it. So I want you to believe God for something. What is that thing that is working in this servant of God life? This is our daddy life, oh God. Is he traveling abroad? Is a man that traveled where and afar? Who do you is it marriage? Is it relationship? You see his children, he's a grandfather today. I attended the senior daughter wedding, all the three. I have not done it to anybody before. I did it at a point of contact for my own children. You go ahead. Talk to God. What do you want God to do? Is it in ministry? What is that thing that is confronting you, challenging you, that this dominion mandate cannot conquer for you? Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. That is the reason why you are giving this seed. You are not giving it for anything. That is why you are giving it for a specific purpose. Tie it to something. Do you need a destiny ever? And you have lost something you want to recovery. Go ahead and talk to God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God will thank you. Heavenly Father, by the supernatural faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by what you are doing in the life of our daddy in the Lord, Apostle Dr. Patrick Otulu and the Dominion Gate Ministry International. Lord, we have come to rejoice with him, O oh God, for this 62 years, O oh God. Thank you, he asked for it and you gave it to him, O oh God. You made it possible for him. Lord, we have come to tap into that grace, O oh God, that everyone, O oh God, who is trusting you for one thing or the other, or they have asked for something before today, it has not come to pass. You that made that deal to come to pass, Father, make ours to come to pass in Jesus' name. Daddy, that before this time next year, oh God, all of us will return back, oh God, with thanksgiving like Anna, that this is what we ask for. Oh that God, in the day we are celebrating a man, an apostle of Dominion Monday, oh God, 62. This is what you have done for us. The evidence will be clear in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Take all the glory and the honor. Jesus' name we pray. You can drop yours. <laughs>